Well, good evening, Pat. How are you doing? I'm good. And you? Uh, same. Yeah, very good. Very good. Yeah, I, I really uh, learned a lot from you uh, from the first two interviews. So I'm sure I will learn um, many more uh, at this interview. And uh, uh, you talk about, uh, you'd like to talk about uh, the history of uh, America's education. So mm -hmm. now uh, I know you, you teach history, right? I do teach history. I teach um, American history, world history, and American government. Okay, how much uh, education was mentioned in the textbook? I mean, the history of American education, how it become uh, public. Yeah, in 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 a in a, in a textbook, uh, an American history textbook, zero is mentioned about um, education. Yeah, wow. history. Wow. Um, now that's any textbook that I've came across. If 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 it is mentioned, it's only going to be mentioned, say, kind of more as a um, kind of like a progressive or a revision, and you might mention Horace Mann. Right. But that's about it. Okay. Yeah, I I didn't know him until uh, about two years ago. Mm -hmm. When I was trying to uh, understand uh, America's public education, why uh, we are in such a mess and why uh, nothing really, uh, things didn't get better. At this stage, things didn't get better, even though uh, since the 80s, uh, you remember the, uh, the report, uh, uh, Amazing at Risk. Yes. So, so that gives like dire warnings uh, about the state uh, at that time. And so, so we have government spent, you know, probably trillions of dollars since then and uh, supposedly trying to fix it, but it's actually only getting worse. Yes, that so, is correct. Yeah, so I was kind of always wonder why is that, uh, but I came to conclusion that that was done on purpose. That was not because any failure or you know some kind of policy. There is something more sinister behind it. I don't know. I don't know if that's that that's your understanding. Um. Well, you've you've brought up a, a, a plenifera <laughs> of, <laughs> of points there. And um, so, you know, when we go back and we look from the beginning of 1607 to the 1830s, mm -hmm. we had a, an education system in play mm -hmm. that um, was uh, phenomenal. In fact, mm -hmm. we, we really got it in, the 16, uh, in 1620 which most of us of history would understand and know that that was the beginning of uh, the Plymouth, um, uh, Plymouth Rock, Massachusetts, okay. the Pilgrims, the Puritans. Okay. And when they came over, um, they, had a, um, they had an education system in play that was very much influenced by a, a, million, uh, a man by the name of William Ames. Oh. And... Um, William, he, William Ames. Ames, A-M-E-S, yep. A-M-E-S, okay. Uh -huh. And so up to that point, if I've, got my, if I've got my names and data, you know, correct on this. Um, so what happened was we switched over after the, the New Testament church started, if you will. And then of mm -hmm. course, then, you know, under the Roman Empire towards the end, then Christianity became legalized. Right. Then you started to see a lot of uh, Aristotelian thought come into place, uh, into mm -hmm. play, which then that just didn't come into play into an influence Christianity. It also came into play of influencing education as well. Mm -hmm. And so in the late, after the Reformation, you had individuals like John Tyndale, uh, William Ames, and we all know the big one, uh, mm -hmm. Martin Luther, right? You know, and so forth. 
um, they started re-looking at this and they went back to what was called more of a Hebrew model. Okay. And then William Ames um, wrote The Morrow of, uh, um, oh goodness, um, the, the Morrow of, of, of Sanctity or Sanctuary. And in that he explains um, a certain thought process, a certain way to um, educate. That is what the pilgrims and the Puritans actually brought over with them. Mm. And this is actually what the founding fathers, how they were educated and trained. I see. Okay. And so today we call that um, process, we call that the principled approach okay. um, to education. In fact, I'm going to be opening up a school, which is a principal approach school okay. uh, as well. So then, so then, so we're going along and we're doing well. And, you know, most people tend to think this whole thing about separation of church and state um, is more of a 20th century phenomenon. It is not. Um, we had a Supreme Court. They started hearing cases on this clear back in the early 1800s. Right. Um, and the, one of the first cases had to do with, you know, that we should have a public school without um bible if you will mm. in it wow that early okay yeah, that early yes but again remember though at that early you had the french revolution oh right which, which yeah. if you look at textbooks and so forth they they say you know oh it follows on our revolution no it was not um you know no. ours was rooted very much into individual liberty rights um providence god i mean just go and look at original documents it's all there right, right the french revolution um they started out with and they were um very much in love with what we had done i mean just think about it or uh, rochambeau uh the marquis de lafayette many of these people went back home mm -hmm. and they were like yes this is what should be done unfortunately it became a very secular Right. Revolution. Right. So, so it was even at that time when we started seeing some uh, court cases come up, and Chief Justice Story, Joseph Story of the Supreme Court, even said, "No, um, there, there's no fine." And I'm paraphrasing. There's no finer textbook than the uh, than the Bible. Right. Why, why shouldn't the Bible be used as a textbook for American youth? Right. So then we get into the 1830s. And that was uh, pretty much in the uh, in the early history of America. Mm -hmm. uh, Bible is used as the main textbook, right? In many many, you know, uh, uh, places, especially in the in the frontiers, in the rural areas. Yeah, the, the Bible was used as the primary uh, the primary uh, reader, if you will. Mm -hmm. Right. This is how children learn to read. Right. This is why. You know, um, it's interesting when they're learning to read, they're reading that and, and they're using the King James Version oh, wow. of the Bible. <laughs> so you're getting those words, you know, at such an early age. And then we wonder why kids can't spell words like a, a basic uh, Dolch word list, like cat, hat, fat, you know, kind of a thing. Well, look at the quality of reading materials that we're using today versus right. then. Um, yeah, it's just night and day. It's just like it is. so so bad now. And so then you come up to Horace Mann, who mm. was in uh, Massachusetts, and he uh, was an educator, and he actually became the superintendent of ed instruction or education right. in Massachusetts. And he started saying, and he was a part of a group that said, you know, we need to have really a centralized public school system. Mm -hmm. He's the one that started what we have today with re regards to bureaucracy, that we needed teacher colleges, that mm -hmm. we needed um, you know, textbooks, that we needed formalized grades mm -hmm. um, for students and so forth. And so that kind that started that push. And, and you know, as we so, started- So what going, kind of model would you call that? Just um, to kind of compare with or con in contrast with the Hebrew model. What, what's different about it? Yeah. 
the the Hebrew model and so forth was really based well for one um the the Christian the Christianity side of it if okay you will. okay um two you know we moved away from the individuality the individual of the students to now oh. we're grouping kids together into a grade first grade second grade third grade um you know mindset okay you know and that you know we had to have curriculums and pretty much this was the beginnings of we have to standardize things if you will so before uh Horace Mann like in America education you say there there was no grades no then. not as not as we know it or not as we understand it today okay um you so, know you you had those one room schoolhouses as like everyone kind of imagined but really in many ways you you had a, a private private education like from a tutor a mm. teacher was hired on all right um you saw a lot of genesis uh genesis six one through nine mm -hmm. where the parents were um, involved with the education of the child mm -hmm. um you saw a lot of the uh, students uh well their learning came from the bible mm -hmm. um they learned a trade early on right. and you saw i mean you saw people um enter into the workforce and was doing crazy things for example did you know that john quincy adams mm -hmm. was basically in short would have came down to in modern day terms he was our ambassador to russia oh at age 14 really wow at age 14 um you know and this and this was also right this was also during the revolutionary era you know when you when you look at it, the late 1700s and 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 so forth so um well so that uh, tells you something yeah <laughs> i guess back then the childhood actually is pretty short right you start working pretty early on well i i, I think i think what it was is is um how we view childhood right. today is very different from then All right you know keep in and keep in mind if you made it to age 30 then mm -hmm. you are an old man <laughs> i mean you right. know you you were on your way out mm -hmm. um by that time mm -hmm. so you know things did start earlier but but i would argue that you saw a better quality education right i guess back then since there's no standard it's really up to the parents to make that decision right make sure their kids get the adequate education there there was um yes the the responsibility on the parents was much more right um, but if you listen to people today they would say well you know it was a poor quality education then not everyone was educated um you know it, it, things like this but yet at the same time if you really believe that then i i've got i've got two books for you to read mm. um the first one is the federalist papers right and the other one is the anti-federalist papers no oh, okay and both of them were written at a level that a farmer in new york would be able to understand and comprehend wow yeah so you can't tell me that this was um a, yeah. a, a uh, poor or not everyone was educated right right and I, and yeah i i actually got uh heard some statistics like back then like in america which is so unique compared with other countries at that time, uh, people in America are highly educated, I mean, compared with every, I mean, there are, people are literate. I mean, the literacy is about like uh, more than 90%. It, it we, was in, in the, the colony of Massachusetts alone during the colonial period. Um, I think in, in there, it, it, see the Boston or the whole colony, you had a literacy rate of about 96%. Okay. But is that just only con, uh, counting on 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 men? No, no, so, not necessarily. No. Hmm. So it's I, a man and woman combined. Uh, oh, absolutely. Um, case in point, take a look at Abigail Adams, hmm. John Adams's wife. I mean, right. brilliantly. Uh, you can look at the letters that you. you um, it's the Adams and Jefferson later uh, letters. Abigail's also got some letters in there. Take Phyllis Whitley, our first um, poet, 
mm -hmm. American poet. She was actually a slave. She was actually a, a household slave, oh, but wow. yet she wrote um, poems and it's very, very good. Um, right. So, you know, we can't, and, and that's another thing that we love to hear, <laughs> you know, only men were educated and that's not always the case either. Right, right, yeah. Um, and and I guess also at that time, it's relatively uh, easy to, to make that judgment, for parents to make a judgment that their children uh, had uh, adequate education because as long as they can read and write, right, they can do business. Basically, they can they can communicate, they can they can read newspapers, and they can do you know uh, accounting, and uh, that's pretty much that's what you need, right? Well, yes and no. Um, definitely, the scales of economy then was very different than say what we have today. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that they did have and they understood and which made them better at it is this concept that education is so much more than knowledge. And, and, and that, that's what we're missing today. Yes, right. this is why you have a state mandate test here in Virginia, we call them SOLs, standards of learning, but yet it just seems as though we just can't get it right. No. Well. There's something that they were doing then that we're not doing today. Um, first and foremost, um, scripture speaks a lot about education. Right. Uh, a verse that comes to mind that says, fear of the Lord is the root of all knowledge. So if you don't have a respect for the Lord, or if you've never been taught that, right. then, then you are not going to be able to be in a condition to gain knowledge um, as we move forward. And that right. knowledge is in the academias. Today, right. we tend to separate subjects into their own fields. Right. Then there was a basic understanding that God is the, uh, is the center of everything. He created right. math. He created right. science, right. Um, history. Um, they understood that. They understood human nature, which is something we don't do today. Yeah, when like for me, like uh, uh, when I came to America, when I, uh, I came to Indiana in 1995, so I grew up in China, you know, so mm -hmm. I was um, uh, middle school, high school, and my undergraduate. So when I came to America, one thing I noticed about America's education is that there is not, in terms uh, the philosophy, in terms the the content, it's not that much different from China, because which is sad. Right, I mean, you know, coming from you, you know, you being able to know the see the differences, that is pretty incredible. Yeah, because I mean, in China we are taught that evolution is the truth. In America, most public schools, that's the same thing. It is, and uh, so it's very uh, atheistic. Uh, education in America, mm -hmm. yep. which is kind of surprising because uh, America was founded on uh, uh, Judeo-Christian, uh, uh, you know, beliefs and ethics and uh, all that. Uh, but our education system is uh, actually uh, atheistic. is mm -hmm. is yeah, basically. <laughs> basically send a message to the kids that you can have all the knowledge and all the academic skills without knowing uh, who God is. And uh, you don't even need God in your life. Right, and, and, that, and that's exactly what has happened um, over time. But the problem with that is, you know, truth, I mean, truth doesn't lie. Right. People lie. Right. And people lie for many reasons. And one of those reasons is because there's always 99% um, of the time, there's always an agenda. Right. I mean, e even you and I have to watch ourselves that we're not trying to promote a, an agenda to uh, to prove our, you know, points of view. You, you always got to be careful of that. Um, yeah, you, right. Because as educators, you and I know that we are not trying to brainwash kids. We are not trying mm -hmm. to pass our uh, value system to them. We are trying to help them 
uh, to learn the skills of uh, so that they can they can uh, discern they have a discernment they can they have the tools and skills to know what is right and what is wrong that, that's correct I mean I tell my kids all the time that um, in school I tell them you know there's going to be a lot of things in history that you're not going to like I right. don't like all right but you can't deny it when you've got a primary source sitting in front of you mm -hmm. and, and you're reading it and right. you see things that you don't agree with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, case in point, let, let's just real uh, quickly here, go talk about like um, slavery, right. right? Everybody loves to demonize Thomas Jefferson. Mm -hmm. The irony about that is there's primary sources out there that shows that as an attorney, he turned around for pro bono cases and he defended runaway slaves right. trying to get them em uh, emancipated yeah um but we don't talk about that yeah uh, and, and and also because the way right now is taught is very simplistic you know is basically is based on the the skin colors right you mean white men are slave owners black men are you know slaves but if you look at history, American history, uh, there are a lot of blacks own slaves. There are. And if you actually look at even paintings mm -hmm. um, that tells the story, there's 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 paintings that has African Americans in them. For example, um, anyone that's hearing this or even um, you as well, uh, get the mental image in your head or after you done watching this, go see it. Um, get the painting in your head, the famous painting of the crossing of the Delaware. Mm -hmm. Nobody sees the other George in the boat besides George Washington. George, his, uh, it was his slave. Okay. But it was, you know, his uh, valet, if you will. All right. He's in the boat with him. Mm -hmm. So my question is this, right? If, 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 if he was a slave, as we understand slavery. Right. How and why would he be in that boat with other whites? Right. Okay. Take, uh, there's another painting, The Battle of Bunker Hill, mm. um, which, by the way, should be called Breed's Hill, I believe, because it was the wrong, it's just mistaken for the wrong, you know, hill. There's a painting <laughs> in there that actually shows a, a black man um, standing behind a white person who is credited for saving a lot of colonists' lives. Mm. So if you just look at the, the primary sources, it tells, you know, a lot of the, the story. Another thing, you know, you hear this now under critical race theory. And, right. You know, we got to change the curriculum, you know, to reflect, you know, true history and so forth. Um, but I ask this question often. I'm like, you know, why is it that we don't teach or show um, a, a, a black heroes, heroes in American history, maybe as much as we should? And no one can answer that. They either say something along the lines of racism or they just can't answer. Well, I'll mm -hmm. tell you why. Because from the beginning of our history, from 1600s all the way up, really into the 1960s, mm -hmm. many, many black Americans um the heroes were actually ministers right so if you now live in a society that believes in and accepts this whole separation of church and state you're not going to talk about black heroes because of the occupation that they had i mean you know just think about it right you know um but you know that was 1830s and horace mann then we started getting into the um, uh, nine, early 1900s, and most of your uh, individuals here that has education backgrounds has you have heard of a man named John Dewey, right? And he is given the the title more of the father of modern um, American education, but I bet you that most people do not know that he was completely in bed with socialists oh socialism. yeah yeah he, he was a socialist yeah he was and it's because of him is now why we have what we have today as far as these uh different toxic philosophies like crt right. and all of this because 
Um, yeah, the Indiana here there is a town called uh, I think called New Harmony. Uh, uh -huh. That's that's the the place of the uh, uh, Ro Robert uh, Robert Owens uh, Utopia. So he yes. kind of trying to build a, 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 a kind of co communist uh, society there. It, it was a failure completely, mm -hmm. but uh, his son uh, was uh, very influential uh, in Indiana politics, especially uh, Indiana's public education. So he was right. one of, uh, I think one of the uh, person who wrote a bill to start public education in Indiana. Well, yeah, and, that, and that would not be surprising because when you start to look at it, um, you have you have the uh, what, what was called the the Frankfurt School, right? Um, out of uh, actually, it was out of Nazi Germany. Right. The Nazis in Germany kicked them out. Right. I mean, go figure. I mean, when you think about it, go figure. That's pretty wild. And they landed in New York. Um, and this is where they ran across John Dewey and they all got in together. And then they started bringing this philosophy into the teacher programs. Right. And then this is where things just went south. Um, yeah, I think a lot of them actually were teaching at uh, uh, Columbia University. It was Columbia mm -hmm. University. Right, and that was the, I think the first teacher's college in America was started there. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so John Dewey just found a way for them to, you know, brought him in, welcomed him with open arms, and now he had his way of actually uh, influencing that next generation. Right. And, and so when we move, and so as you can see, we've moved, further and further away where we had a proper understanding of God's uh, purpose in this nation and in education to now you have a very secular uh, uh, worldview interpretation of education. Right. Yeah, and also the goal and the philosophy of education changed fundamentally. Okay. Like you said, early on, the early educations uh, uh, in America, the purpose is basically uh, train the people so that they can uh, work uh, in well in their farm or in their uh, family business is more focused on individual or a family or may, maybe a, 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 a society uh, you know local society but since Horace Mann because he actually learned from the model actually from uh, uh, Prussia Prussia uh, education model uh, mm -hmm. So, so the the goal and education turned into to serve the state, yes, serve the country. So that because we we want to build a strong country, like for the Persia, they want to build their empire. So they need uh, people who can, you know, who can serve in the army, who can serve in the factories. So they started their kind of public education is to train everybody. I think that's a huge. Uh, and also fundamental change of the purpose of education. And we're still here today, still yes. here today that the purpose of education is to, well, uh, they say the purpose of education is, is, to, is to make good citizens. Mm -hmm. Now that sounds good, right? Uh, right, but, sounds but, <laughs> wonderful. But right. what do you mean a citizen? Citizen that you're part of a society, you're part of a state, right? Mm -hmm. So now your goal is no longer like your family, uh, your community is the government. Yes, it's yeah. The goal the goal now is not to fear the Lord, you know, mm -hmm. um, to gain wisdom. Now it is to be a good citizen and really to become a product of the state. Yeah. And what, that this, is what's happened. Right, and this is what exactly uh, I experienced when I grew up in China. Everything. We were being told is not about ourselves, that we have a bigger purpose. We are serving, you know, the 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 glorious, uh, you know, communism. Mm -hmm. So so that we are, we were told to sacrifice our individual interest, so that we can, uh, you know, make the progress. Uh, 
and that's something we, we're here today too it is and and that is and and that is and that alone is scary but what's even worse than that is that you literally have so many americans it's just falling right in line with it and, and agree right. with it right well the, because they don't know the history they don't know the history no, yeah they don't and the, like uh, this is kind of it take uh, generations things got changed right from you know Horace Mann, then later to John Dewey and Frankfurt. And then we got into uh, uh, cultural Marxism. Then from there, we got critical theory. Then we got the critical race theory. This take generations. So most of the parents were educated in a system that they already been brainwashed. So they right. So they, they, they take it for granted. I mean, that's what it is. So they just, they, I, yeah, I think parents really, in a way, needs to wake up and to look at it. And one thing uh, I'm trying to do as a, a survivor's communism, I'm trying to actually bring that to, to schools, to parents about the evil of communism. Because as far as I know, that was not taught in America. It has not been taught probably for a good two and a half generations. Right. Um, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so we we kind of know the evil of uh, Nazism uh, or the fascism, but we don't we don't even well, there's nothing about communists, uh, nothing about what the Soviet Union did or uh, China did, or what Mao did. But even when they talk about the Nazism and the fascism, they don't even talk about both. Actually, are socialistic. No, they don't. It's just all. It, it really, because we've done now, um, now that we've accumulated basically to standardized curriculum mm -hmm. and timelines, you know, you have only a certain amount of time to cover a certain amount of things. And we've created standardized tests of like A, B, C, D. Right. No, you don't get into, it, all it is is rote memorization knowledge. Right. You right. don't get into why this is evil why right. this doesn't work right um you we don't and then if you're at the behest of of basically that textbook publishing company well you know you're definitely not going to get much anywhere right yeah it's true mm -hmm. well uh and uh, you said you're going to uh go back to the hebrew model you want to start your own school yeah, yes. Yeah. So at this point, because I, and this has been an eight year journey. Okay. Um, over the past, it's interesting because even out of high school, I always thought that I, I mean, I didn't get a bad education, but I wasn't satisfied with my education. Right. I, I, I remember even being an early 20 year old thinking, you know, did I really learn how to think? No. <laughs> You know, I and, and I and something was telling me that or making me ask that question. So I would have to say about 10, 12 years ago, in, I teach in an alternative school right now okay. uh, for behavioral students. Okay. And I started noticing then that my students that I was getting, they were coming to me incrementally, uh, very, very small, but nevertheless, worse and worse and worse. Hmm. To the point where I started noticing that these kids do not have any resiliency skills. They they just can't function. They can't relate. They can't, you know. And it's more than just being uh, negative. It's just their whole outlook. And then, right. and then as we started moving, and then standards change. You know, to where things like um, there's no hard set in stone consequences anymore. Mm -hmm. for things because everyone's fearful of lawsuits or right, right. or a, a racial charge to you know you can't give a zero now even if a student doesn't do anything you have to give them the lowest f that there is yeah this i heard a lot even uh people who don't turn in their homework uh they still got 50 percent yes they yeah. just like Wow, I mean, this is worse than anywhere else. Like in China, yeah. if you don't do your homework, you got zero. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and it was that way here for the longest time too. But you know, 
not anymore. I mean, so I started seeing all of these things taking place. Yeah. And I, and I started questioning what I did in the classroom. And then I came across, I had some friends that introduced me to FACE, Foundations of American Christian Education. Mm. And they, I, I got involved with them and they taught about the principled approach. Okay, so it's called Foundation? Foundation of American Christian Education. Foundation of American? Christian. Christian. Education. education. Okay. Yep. And so got involved with them. And um, I realized that what I was doing in my classroom, a lot of things that I was doing in my classroom was right on target. Right. Um, I just didn't know it. Mm. A lot of other things, um, I was like, wow, I wish I could do that. Well, I actually took the summer foundations uh, course this summer, which um, it's a three-year uh, three course, mm. three summers. Mm. to where I will become a master principal approach teacher. Oh, good. I've taken some of the things I learned this summer and have put it into my classroom this year mm. and um, done as much as I can without crossing lines. Mm -hmm. And the results have been absolutely amazing with my kids. Oh, wow. So this is how our founding generation, founding fathers and mothers were educated. And this is really how students should be educated right right and and so um so with that you know i've i've thought over the years too about you know um opening a school but now with covid19 happened and with everything now coming to a head and parents are like wow we had no idea this was happening mm -hmm. and personally for um uh religious and spiritual uh, grounds i am not going to participate in the nonsense that is coming down right um i refuse to right uh, you know all of us contrary i mean you you know you, you can believe what you want to believe it's a free country but my belief system tells me that i have to answer to a god right and there's a couple questions you know such as uh why did i call a girl a boy or why did i do this or that in my classroom and I don't I, I don't want to give the wrong answer to God. Right. Um, exactly. Off of that. Yeah. Well my my wife is teaching at a public uh uh public high school. So that's her line. I mean I mean that's her line to, you know, if you cross it, I'll quit. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep. And, and same here. That is that's where it's at. So I, I've got and because of that, and it's been put on my heart of the fact that I, I this is going to come across as arrogant, but it's not. Um, no. I, I, I see myself as an Oscar Schindler. Mm. There's 56 million students in the United States in public right. schools. Right. I want to pull as many of those kids out as possible. Right. You right. know, I, I want parents to um, homeschool, private school, combination, However, but whatever you do, get them out. Yeah. Um, because, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Voodoo, Voody Bachman, a minister, uh, a black minister. He's very anti-CRT. But mm. he was, he, he said, you know, um, he was talking to parents and he made the comment, he goes, you know, what would you, what did you expect if you send your children to the Roman Empire to be educated, right. they're going to come back, they're going to come back as Romans. Right. You know, what would you expect them to be? And that's, that's the point. We've got to, these kids have got to be pulled out. Um, I see public education at this point as a stage four uh, cancer patient. Mm -hmm. And I don't know unless you know there's plenty of other people that's much smarter than me um and if they've got an idea of how to properly reform it then by all means but i don't see it at a reformable state anymore right yeah i think a lot of people uh like you get to that conclusion and uh, i got a conclusion about that a couple of years ago uh it's not because i was teaching at public school i was teaching at a private christian school i see the same problem 
Uh, so it's not a not a the how things get done is the principle itself, the mm -hmm. funding, the whole education philosophy, uh, that is wrong. So if that is wrong, it doesn't matter how, how well you do it. Uh, right. and, and also a uh, Christian school, uh, it's a Christian school and, uh, and that year they decided to take voucher monies. And uh, I mean, that's what happened all over Indiana. But that's the time I said, okay, um, I, I just cannot stay in it anymore. I love my kids, uh, but they don't want to be part of it. Uh, and that's my kind of, in a way, I go there because I want my kids get proper education. And in that system, we couldn't because we suffer the same thing. It's not as bad, but suffer the same thing at public school. The grades are highly inflated. Uh, kids, uh, when they get to high school, they just lost interest in learning. Everything is, we use the same textbook. Uh, you know, the teachers are trained in the same school mm -hmm. as in public schools. I mean, they, they don't realize that. It, I mean, for me, I never get a uh, teacher's education. Uh, I mean, I can just learn on my own, right? right? And which helped me to see the problem. Because if you are in there for too long, you don't feel it. Just like you go to a jacuzzi, right? right. First, first thing you got in, that's hot. Then you got used to it. <laughs> you don't feel right. that hot anymore. So most of my colleagues kind of like that. They don't see the problem. And I, as an outsider, I see the problem, but nobody really, I, mean, I cannot convince anyone. Right. Uh, so for me, I said, okay, I need to come get out. I need to uh, do my research and figure out what is wrong with the American system because we pull trillions and trillions of money into it. And we, we got a very bad result. And I, just recently, I came to a conclusion that it's not because of the failure of the reform. It is the whole thing that was done on purpose. Actually, the failure of the American education was the success of the communists. Yeah, yes. Um, I, and I, I, can, I, I can agree with that analysis um, completely. Um, you know, we've poured trillions of dollars into, into reform and we're trying to reform an institution and a system when actuality, we weren't looking at the fundamental or the core problems. No, um, no. When you move away from what your basis was from the very beginning, um, and, and, you know, again, scripture is very clear on how to educate. When you move away from that, then it doesn't matter what you do, how much you pour into it. Um, right, and I, and you can you can see that the progression as actually won't. It's not. It's a logic progression. Uh, is right. that first you be convinced that the the goal of education is to train them to be quote unquote good citizens. Right. Train them for the purpose of the state, uh, and then. It's not that far to move that into train them to become social activists. Correct, correct. And, and that's what the communists did. I mean, they actually had that plan. Uh, this, they worked everything out in the thirties. It's called the cultural Marxism, is that they are going to take over all the cultural uh, institutes, institutions of Western uh, uh, society. I mean, like uh, it's specifically is the America. It took mm -hmm. all the you know uh, uh, institutions, uh, the culture, education. Uh, so they actually had the change uh, from the classic uh, Marxism. Classic classic Marxism is to control the means of pro production. It's control. Mm -hmm. It's materialistic. Right. And uh, the cultural Marxism said, no, no, that won't work. That won't work in America. We have to control the, the, cause the culture produce, uh, control the, the means of cultural production. Yes. And, and they actually succeeded. And yeah. we, we see the result. We they, see they, what's happening. And, and you're right. And, and going back to a little bit with what you're saying about the private school thing mm. as well. Um, and I don't want to sound as as anti private school because I'm sure um, there, there's many fine Christian schools out there. 
But the one thing I've learned just in the last two weeks and in studying it out a little bit, I'm like, wow, you know, it's kind of like a shock. Um, but really, many Christian schools um, is only that in name. Right. Because like you said, the teachers are, have already been trained, you know, their their uh, pedigree and everything is right. trained just like uh, pub public school teachers, private schools, it has the same curriculum. And, and then they throw in a Bible class or chapel and then they right. call it Christian. Right. That's for that's just window dressing. Right. Um, you know, it's just it's just a name. Um yeah, there definitely there, there, there is a, a big difference uh, uh, from uh, the, the school I taught. Uh, the kids are from good families. Mm -hmm. So we do have a, a good in terms of a culture, right? I mean, you don't, nothing got lost in my school. Right. And if, if you lost something, you'll find it by end of, end of the day or next day. Nobody's stealing, stealing anything, which is marvelous. I mean, compared with the, the public schools. But again, the same tech, textbook, the same pedagogy, the, you know, the same uh, standard we had to follow because it's accredited by the state. Right. Um, yeah. So, so it is fundamentally wrong. And the kids, uh, when they get to high school, they lost the interest of learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just want to get grades. They work. They definitely work hard, but they just get the grades. They right. don't. They don't want to go beyond it. They they just say, okay, tell me what, what the answer is. I memorize it. I just put down the answer. Whether or not it's wrong or right or wrong, I don't. I don't care. Right. Tell me what to do. Right, and and that is so true. I mean, I just told one of my students last week. She's very bright, mm -hmm. but she's very lazy. And um, and I know this might not set well with some in the audience, but you know I, this is a relationship I've got with this student, really. All right. Um, but you know all of my tests that I give anymore, they're not true, false, matching, multiple choice. Everything is summary. Right. So my tests might only have 10, 12, 15 questions for it, but they're all summary based questions, which right. means you have to write out. You either know it or you don't. Right. And uh, she got so upset with me and, and said, you know, why can't we have matching? And I came back with without even missing a beat. And I said, <laughs> I said, because I don't want you to be stupid. Mm -hmm. Now, I wasn't calling her stupid. Right. But, you know, what she was asking for was really, hey, Mr. Lamb, let me have the easy way out. Right. Give me matching so that I can I don't have to think. <laughs> That's right. what she's asking for me to do. Right. So, and the, here's something kind of, you know, way uh, shocked me. I mean, that was the the my former school. I have those two uh, uh, junior students, right? And uh, that was happened to be the uh, Columbus Day that day. So I come to class. I said, okay. Do you know what today is? They have no idea, right? Mm -hmm. Say, so, okay. Well, I say his name actually is quite famous. There are many cities named after him. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is actually a city just south from us, from, uh, from um, my city, Greenwood. The next city is that I said, I mean, we actually owe him a lot to be here mm -hmm. in America. They don't know who that guy is. Right, right, and, and I mean, and, and I'm even surprised they allowed you to even speak of it. Right, and and the one time, uh, one of them actually asked me that uh, uh, is Western civilization European. Mm -hmm. They said they said Western civilization. No, uh, yeah, it says it's Western civilization European. A European. Right. Oh, is it? Oh, that's what they asked. If it was they ask me, that's yeah. me. Is Western civilization Europe? Because we are talking about Western uh, civilization, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Well, at least he 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 got yeah, at least I mean at least got the name right, but just so. like, but they just somehow they do not make the connects. Me, mm -hmm. uh, it's like shocking to me. And uh, the kids, like you said, they don't want to think. Mm -hmm. They just memorize long enough 
so they can pass the test. They didn't forget about it. Right. And, you know, and the, we, we all know the thing is like, we have been there teaching for seven years. Every year we complain, right? The kids forget everything they learn uh, after the summer. There's a reason for that, right? Yes. So, so we complain, but we don't do anything. We still teach them, you know, there is a multiple choice. I mean, there's a, a standard answer you put in. They just memory it long enough to, because they've never been challenged to think. Right. They never say, okay. And uh, my student, very typical is that after a test, um, I said, I mean, I want you to understand what's going on. If you made mistakes, redo it. And I give you half a point. Um, because I want them to learn, right? And some of them, many of them just write the right answer. Mm -hmm. I'll throw back back to them. And they got shocked. They said, I got the right answer. I said, I don't care about your right answer. You got to show me how you got to the answer because right. I know the answer. You got to show me. I mean, at the first they were shocked. and But fortunately, a lot of them starting to understand why I did that. And some mm -hmm. of them actually... Uh, benefit from that but that mm -hmm. is so typical is that they think i just put in the right answer then that, that's it right i and, don't and i don't care how do how 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 I mean how do you get it just tell me the answer just tell me the right answer i put on there right and that and that goes to and that speaks to a lot with um with the school i'm starting too and that is that um in mm -hmm. admiral um uh, Rickover, uh, Hyman oh. Rickover, the, the same guy that did the nation at risk. Oh, wow. Yeah. The same guy. Um, okay. He, he spoke to this too. And, um, and, and the thing is that, you know, we want the answers and we don't want to think and so forth, which really speaks to the, the concept of, of, we don't want to learn the principles of mm -hmm. things and, right. you know, different things have principles, the science, mm -hmm has uh, principles, the principles of natural law, of, you, you know, uh, things like that. Um, economics has principles behind them, the underlying uh, things. Right, right. Demand, you know, uh, different fields have that. And the problem is we don't teach principles. We no. teach knowledge. No. And so no. when you teach knowledge, that's, I mean, it's, it's one ear and out the other. It right. doesn't stick because you don't know why, right. the why behind something. Don't know right. Yeah. I mean, this is very common. People like, uh, I, uh, I taught calculus uh, there for seven years. The first two years, I just couldn't understand why they couldn't understand calculus. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that it's not because they don't understand calculus. It's because they never understood algebra. Right. They, they did all the work, but they do not understand why. If you ask them what is the basic rules of algebra, they had no idea. Right. Yeah, they can just do some problems because mm -hmm. they memorize that, but they do not understand what is, just like you said, the principles, right? Yep. I mean, the whole math, the science is, a, is an axiom system, right? It's based on a set of simple uh, truth. Mm -hmm. And then we build on top of that. But most right. people don't 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 know about those uh, principles. They don't don't know the simple truths. No, they but don't. We, and they don't they don't even understand how to get back to it. Right? There is right. a way you can get back to it. And so therefore, you see a lot of kids nowadays. They just go with the, something in fashion. You know, sounds right. I mean, social justice or you know, Black Lives Matters. I mean, sounds good, but they never was able to figure out what's behind that. They never trained. I mean, they don't have that. They don't have that skill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. And they, and they don't. And that's what I love about the, the principled approach. You're right. Because um, it does get back and teaches that those, those, those concepts. Right. Um, you know, one thing that, that it also does too, which we've gotten away from, but John Adams spoke a lot about it, and that is the fact of self-government. Right. You know, 
um, self-control. Right. You may have freedom to do many, many things that's even legal. Right. But really, is it something that you should be participating in or doing? Right. Yeah. Because yeah. it's naturally wrong. Right. Yeah, it's, something is legal doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we know a lot of politicians do that, right? They're just all the time trying to get as long as they can get away from it. Yeah. All and the time. so when are, are you already starting your school or is it something to plan? What we're doing is uh, we've already we're already starting. And when I say already starting, we're already um, looking at we're, we're looking for a location. Mm. Uh, we've started the process of formulating a board. Oh, wonderful. Um, I'm, I will be putting in paperwork in to get that nonprofit uh, corporation status for here okay. in Virginia. Okay. Um, then we're starting fundraising. We would huh. like to be started by next year. Okay. Um, if all goes well. But, you know, there's a lot of things that has to be ready to go. Right. <laughs> so I, first day are, you, opening. are you going to start with uh, uh, what? Prime school, middle school? Or the we whole will, thing? You know, I, I would love to do the whole thing. But okay. with that, you got to look at things like, uh, you know, do you hire a ninth grade teacher for two students? Right. Or, well, in that case, you'd have to hire, really, in many ways, you'd have to hire four ninth grade teachers, you know, or, or to be able to teach multi uh, uh, lessons in, in, in the different subjects. So we're kind of like thinking, I put out a survey to see what the general uh, population around here would look at, mm. and we'll probably break start out with a few grades first, mm. and then go from there. So start with uh, what elementary school first? Yeah, probably at this point, K through three. Okay. Or, but then there's a high demand here for the middle school. Right. So we're still kind of looking at this a little bit and seeing which way we would want to go. I see. Yeah, I was. Uh, thinking of starting school but i was thinking starting at the middle school uh, it's because it's very possible right because i'm what i noticed that at least here in indiana uh, a lot of churches have uh elementary schools or mm -hmm. they they go from k through uh eight so they don't have right. high school uh and and the relatively elementary school is okay uh and uh, so, but I want to get them when they are in the middle schools, six to eight. And uh, because they are still curious, still want to learn. Right. And, and still haven't started to have the attitude yet, you know, not, mm -hmm. not in a high schooler kind of type of attitude. Right. <laughs> and, uh, right. and, and I think we can just only focus on, you don't need many of that teachers because you only just focus on language and math. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, everything else they can learn on their own and they should, you know, not, not just put the like history teachers out, <laughs> you still can, yeah. can teach, but like to me, fundamentally, if they can read and write, uh, you can do math, they should be good enough. They should go, they should go on their own because you can say a lot of founding fathers, they learned on their own, right? Franklin, yeah. So all they did is they learned how to read and write and do math. After that, they just on their own, and that well, was yeah. Well, they read, they read, they write, and they did math, and then they went off to college. Right, is for pretty much what they did. Exactly. Um, That's kind of the the classic uh, education model, right? The trivian. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. I, you know, way I think uh, we should go back to that. We, there's a lot of things we need to go back to. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, yeah, Fun I think fundamentally is the parents has to be in charge. They do. Um, fundamentally. And we uh, have to, we have to teach the kids <laughs> to respect their parents and to keep their family tradition, to think as an individual, like you point mm -hmm. out, to think as a family member. And that's it. I mean, a member of local society, but not as... Right someone working for the government or you know to to be a foot soldier of some kind of ideology like social justice and all that correct yeah correct yeah, yeah so there there would definitely be a lot there's definitely a lot that has to get back to 
Um, I think, again, I, I think I've said this on here too. I'm still convinced that um, over the next three to five years, I think you're going to see teachers walking out. Right. Um, I think you're still going to see uh, students being pulled out. Right. Um, as well. I, at this point, you know, education is at a crossroads. Right. And either either way we go down the path to the left or the path to the right and i'm not saying that in a political sense but um either way we go it's going to fundamentally change school as we know it right and also our, the future about. yeah and also the future of our republic it will yes um mm -hmm. because if we keep doing what we're doing under the current public school right. system i don't see us having a republic no no, you you um, will be gone. Pretty, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, the communist has succeeded succeeded so far. Mm -hmm. This is our their last push is to push their ideology into uh, K through twelve education. And once right. they once they got that, they'll get the vote. I mean, yeah. The 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 current Democratic Party is not Democratic Party anymore. It's pretty much a socialist party. It is, it is, mm -hmm. and um, and, and and you know we we just had a historic election here in Virginia. I mean, mm -hmm. um, we have we haven't had a Republican elected at the state level um, in 12, 14 years. Right. At this point, um, but yet this last election cycle we had three. Right. That's what that's gave us the hope <laughs> yeah, i mean governor lieutenant governor right. and attorney general and right. i'm telling you we worked our tails off yeah. but you know i listened to them and you know and i and i listened to what's being said and um you know i have to give i have to show i have to show mercy but yet at the same time it's irritating because even then i still hear things like you know well, we got to go back to having standards or we got to do this. And, you know, I listen to this and I think, well, they don't know better, <laughs> meaning they don't know what we know about Horace Mann and, and John Dewey and, and what's happened since the 1830s. Um, but the thing is, if you think that you're just going to be able to come back and do what, uh, what worked before seemed to work, you know, the, we're gonna fall on our on our faces, right? You know, again, it right now the big push, you know, anywhere really is the whole thing about vocational training. Hey, mm -hmm. you know, let's let's get these kids vocational skills. I'm all for it, mm -hmm. but again, if what is the point in vocational training if you cannot self-regulate or right, self-control right. yourself? Yeah, and you don't understand principles. It yeah, doesn't make right. sense. Yeah, it's still the same principle that uh, the students are working for the state. Yes. Because the state now needs skilled workers in some trade, so therefore you learn the trade. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was actually the problem back then uh, in the 80s. There's a lot of trade schools back then for trade. Right. But what happened? Things got outsourced. We yeah. did, we we the society didn't need them, and they couldn't get jobs. So then everybody goes to college. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we follow the same thing, then that's the same principle. We're right. still in trouble. We still don't didn't train them like you said to be uh, uh to be able to know the truth, to be mm -hmm. able to to see uh. To be be able to tell the difference between evil and good, right? Right. To know what is right, what is wrong, and also to be able to have self control to not just do whatever you want it, right? You want to make, right. you want to contemplate, you want to see the consequence before you actually doing anything. Uh, yeah. So definitely, we have to change the education at the fundamental level but but to me i think we we still have a lot of work to do to educate parents we do to we get do. them most, yeah yeah most people don't even understand that 
even their education um, has been flawed. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the, one of the things that we're doing, those that's interested in, in helping and working with the school, mm -hmm. um, we are doing a self study. Well, we're doing a study group, okay. and we're we're using the book um, "Renewing the Mind: Teaching and Learning." Okay. By uh, by Carol, uh, Dr. Carol Adams. And the book is phenomenal from the standpoint it really shows you what a principled approach school is. Uh -huh. but it also shows you, um, you know, I, in, myself included, I've had people say, oh my, I have no, I had no idea how lacking in education I right. really am. Right. You know, uh, you said so, doc, doc, Dr. Carol Adams. Mm -hmm. Carol. Yep. Arrow Adams. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Well, well, thank you so much. This is a yes. wonderful interview, and I think we can keep. Well, definitely, uh, I'd like to uh, keep working uh, with you. Uh, I mean, I'm learning how to start something, and and you are doing something, so we can learn from each other. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm actually going to. Texas uh, end of this month and talk to another uh, uh, lady. Uh, she's uh, thinking of starting her own kind of education um, school. So I think people are there, uh, uh, more and more people are trying to get into this. And yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I think it, it's, it's good that we, we work together on, on this. Yeah, it's and you're going to see it, and it's and it's going to happen. I mean, mm. uh, again, I I, you, I think you see a public school system in, as an institution that's a stage four cancer patient. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, exactly. I mean, I actually uh, a couple of years ago I wrote a kind of a post. I said that uh, our in that I said our education system is brain dead. No. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. It's ha it has been put on the life support. And mm -hmm. because people in the system, they still want to make money out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. But this year I realized that there is something more sinister to that. It's, yeah. Is communism. I mean, they did that on purpose. Yep, mm -hmm. they sure did, so. Yeah. Well. well th thank you so much. Yes, and thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm sure we will we'll have a chance to, to talk more. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Bye. Thank you for Bye. your time.